Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is your man, the Leather Cowboy, Robert Muhammad, right here, Premier Leather Craft Studios in the Dirty Dirty. And let me tell y'all what I just did. I just did this video one time already, but I forgot to hit the record button. I actually hit the camera button and was taking self pictures of myself. And this whole time, I did this nice video, was all hyped and all this. So now I got to do this all over again. So, ruined my surprise actually. But here we go. Uh, part of this video is an informational video. And this is something that you can carry to and give to all of your customers or your clients that's out there on something that they didn't know. Now, I had a customer that came in and this is the MCM wallet. Some of you might not be old enough to remember MCM, but MCM was out very popular back in the 90s when I was uh, younger. <laughs> and uh, it was out, it came out right when Dooney and Burke was launching out, uh, MCM was up there, Fendi was up there, Gucci was launching and becoming real popular in the U.S. And a lot of other big time name brands, Louis Vuitton, uh, uh, it's just a whole host of people. But MCM was uh, one of the ones that a lot of the rappers was taking in uh that took uh, a liking to back in the late 80s and early 90s. So this particular client came in and said, hey man, he said, uh, now this is a real, according to him, it's a real MCM wallet. And I researched it because I'm gonna insert a, video, uh, a, a picture in this video to show you just how much MCM, even though it's not as popular as Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and, and all of these, Fendi is making a comeback, but MCM is not as popular, but it's still a heavy hitter. Now, the, the picture that you guys are gonna see, you're gonna see the price on this very exact same wallet as $169 on that website. And when I Googled it, it's pretty much the same price, but that's the most popular one if you want to find that MCM wallet. And what he wanted me to do, he wanted me to take that, take the outside cover part and make, turn it into a Premier Leather Crafters piece with the MCM on there. Cool, fine, not a problem, I'll do that. But here's the thing, and it's something that I've been telling clients and customers for years. Just because something has a big price name on it or you buying it from some of these high-end plus nosebleed retail stores, don't necessarily mean that it is, it's real to a degree, but it's, uh, it's more fluff than anything else. And I'm going to tell you what I mean. Um, in this particular piece, and you can also look at it in a lot of belts as well. People out here spending a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars for a Gucci belt just because it has Gucci on it, but that person doesn't know that it's a three-piece belt. Now, here's a little information that you can relate. Now, here in the United States, it's absolutely illegal to stamp genuine leather on anything and then sell it at a out of a retail store as real leather. So, here is what uh, a lot of the manufacturers or these big-time names do. They will go on the inside and stamp genuine leather here because the average customer, they just read that part and then they think that everything is genuine leather. Now, here's an experiment, something you can do in your spare time or your part time or whenever you're just out and about. You can go to Dollar General and you can go to their belt section. And when you pick up that belt and you turn it over and you're trying to find the size, and then you'll see that it says genuine leather on the inside of the belt. Now, keep that in mind. You can't stamp genuine leather on anything and then sell it as real. But here's where a lot of manufacturers got around that. The part that has genuine leather on it is the only part that is real leather. So if you go and you see that belt in Dollar General and it has genuine leather stamped on the inside, the lining on the inside of that belt is the only thing that's genuine leather. Same thing with this MCM wallet. I guess you guys can see that. Uh, there it is. This is the only part that says genuine leather. Just this pocket. That's the only part that's genuine leather. The rest of this, now I'm not going to say MCM did this, smells like leather, but pleather also smells like leather too, or naugahyde. 
has that smell, but it wouldn't put it past me if this pocket is the only part that is real leather. The rest of this is knockoff with, not knockoff, but not real leather, but MCM has put their name on it, so they can't say that. Now, I'm not saying that MCM getting a whole bunch of people, but when you buy your wallets from a custom leather crafter like myself and like host of others, you know when you buy a wallet from us, it's leather all the way through. Now, we use different grades of leather and different thicknesses, different sizes or whatever to make whatever project, but a customer cannot pull this apart, and this is what I was showing in the other video because when I first started taking this apart, taking all the stitching loose, and I start peeling it back, this is what I found in the insides of this $169 MCM wallet. Cardboard. Cardboard, ladies and gentlemen. $169. This guy paid for this. I think he paid this, paid that much, on the website, on eBay. And that's the picture that I'm going to say. This is an eBay post where I screenshotted eBay that they had these exact same wallets on there. And eBay is selling these for $169. $169 and you're getting cardboard. Look at that. Cardboard. Cardboard. $169 wallet. So then you have customers or clients that say, well, why are you so expensive? Because you're dumb enough to pay $170 for some cardboard. And it's not even real leather. So you, you, you have to, sometimes, a lot of times in our business, you have to educate people and let them know. So, um, but this is what we call in the leather craft world a three-piece wallet. One piece, two piece, three piece. Same thing on the belts. The interior part of that belt, the lining, once you start pulling that apart, you can do that as an experiment just to show your customers and your clients. When you start separating that, you'll see that interior little hump in those belts that they see that you see in department stores. That is paper, cardboard. Now, with a custom leather crafter, the only part that you will find that's paper in there, and if it's a good crafter, and I hope that it will be a good crafter, you will find this type of paper. And this is called RFID shield blocker. This is for your protection. Uh, this is, it keeps scammers from scanning your wallet, what they'll do. Because in now in the earlier 2000s, they used to have this credit card reader. A lot of the waitresses and waiters used to have, especially when you were, were from out of town or out of the country, out of state. When you go to give your credit card to the server, they'll have one of these little pocket things, which you can buy off Amazon. They'll have these little pocket things. So on their way to the cash register, they'll scan your card. Just get your information off of it. That's all they need. They'll scan your card, get your information off of it, then they'll go to the register and then let the, the cashier uh, do their thing with your charge and then they'll bring it back to you like nothing ever happens. People caught on to that. So what, what happened then is crime got smarter. Now they come up with a scanner. And this little scanner, all you do is hold that button and you just walk by somebody's pocket with their wallet still in the pocket. You just walk past them and you can scan the wallet if and it'll get all of your information down on here. If you don't have RFID shield blocker. This is why custom crafters put this in here. Now, and this is what I was opening up because I just got a shipment in from Tandy and I keep this stuff. All of my customers and clients, if they order a wallet, uh, they'll get this inside of their pieces. Now, that's the only piece, but it's not to make the wallet stiff or hold its shape. It's there for protection. So you can educate your customers and your clients on that because they needed to know that. So the next time somebody is uh, coming in and telling you that they have this, oh, I spent two grand on this Louis Vuitton purse, and then when you open it up, you find that the stiffener, the, the bag stiffener that's in that bag is cardboard. Or they went and spent uh, 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 two, three hundred dollars on a 
a Prada wallet or a clutch purse and then the filler that's in there that gives it that stiffness is cardboard. So people are getting got and really don't even know that they're getting got because in this country, uh, uh, people pay a lot of money to get around a lot of the laws here. And that is one of the, the, the laws that's in business is you can't, uh, you, you can't knowingly sell something to somebody that is fake and you have that genuine leather stamped on there. That's just a, a, a little tidbit. I'm gonna get out of my soapbox now. Th then we went to the second part of this video to where uh, I just got a shipment in from Tandy. You guys already know I'm a Tandy guy. And then I went through this big old thing to where I was dramatically opening up the box and all this other kind of stuff and just thought it would have been real cool for the video and then I didn't even have a video running. But, uh, um, I, I talked with the the, the um, sales guy because Tandy is still um, um, uh, what you call it practicing COVID-19 so the, the Tandy store here in Alabama is closed now normally when I put a order um, when I get ready to get supplies I will drive down to uh, Tandy store where I can put my hands on products. I can look at it. I can see and then they have a little table and section where they, they got new tools coming in. I can play around and see if I can make different shapes and patterns before I actually even buy it. But they are exercising COVID-19 and they're still closed. Be glad when you guys open back up again. You know what I'm saying? But um, one thing about it too, if you're in this business, make sure that you build a good relationship and have a good rapport with whoever you're buying your products from. Because even though I wasn't able to go down and physically touch my hides and look at them and see what was going on, uh, they know from my past history of shopping with them over 27 years, uh, they know what I look for and they know what I like. So. Uh, the GM was real cool about putting my order together and sent me exactly, exactly what I would have picked out. So, but uh, just order some more tan coat. I'm starting to use a lot of this stuff now, uh, especially for resistance. And if you guys can go back and look through some of the other videos, you can you'll see uh, the videos about resisting. Uh, and at that time, I think I was using Super Sheen. And talking about resisting, talking about resisting, but uh, now since then I have switched over to tan coat. I'm seeing a lot of crafters use tan coat. A lot of them are still using neat lac, which is an old school technique. I need to do a video on that. That's pretty cool right there. Uh, using neat lac, and I use a lot of browns in a lot of my projects because I like the way that the brown. Uh, makes the tooling or the carving just pop. I mean, even all of your burnishing or your embossing and everything like that, that brown just makes it pop. So I told him, I said, man, I really want to get away from doing so many browns. I mean, I even airbrush with brown because I can do so much with it. But uh, I said, uh, he, he was listening, calling off all the different colors and stuff like that. And I said, man, just put me something in there, surprise me with it. You know, I'll make it work. That's what crafters do. We make it work. So he sent me this uh, EcoFlow uh, Canyon Tan. And he said it was like a cross between a light brown and uh, a, a tan, a Ranger Tan. I forget what he told me actually, because I just told him just to send me some. I was just frustrated and I wanted to try something different than brown. So he sent me this. The only thing about this particular product it's uh, the EcoFlow. And I am a Phoebings type crafter. Phoebings, Fibings, depending on what part of the country you're from, depending on how you hold your mouth when you say it. Uh, I'm just not, because EcoFlow, the good part about EcoFlow is you can dilute it and tone it down with water. Now, with Fibings, it, being an alcohol dye, then you have to go through a whole lot of other stuff with diffusers and then all that kind of stuff to tone the, co the coloration down and, and, and work with it, which that's not a problem too because if you're a crafter, you can have that, you have that vision and you know what kind of tone of a particular color you want to achieve. So you still can tone down the fibers, you just have to use a little bit, you have to use some extra products in there with it. 
But the EcoFlow, you can just tone it down with water. I just don't like the way it ex the pigments of the cowhide accepts it. But I'm going to try it because I just stepped out there in that water and bought that. So I'm going to try it. Then they had, which is great, these right here. This is my uh, two to three ounce veg tan that I use. Uh, actually, I use these on wallets. I use them on lining. They had these on sale. Uh, the whole, the, the side, they had the side on sale for, um, I think I spent $39.99 on these and I bought two. Two, and this is Craftsman. But see, that's the power too of taking advantage of the COVID-19. Everybody is hurting and people are marking down prices like crazy to get rid of the stuff. So I don't know when they got it in, but hey, it was what I needed and I wound up buying two. So I spent 80 bucks on two sides of two to three ounce Craftsman. So good deal on that. And then also they had a sale that was running on the eight to nine ounce Craftsman Vance Tan double shoulders. And I think I spent a pretty good bit on these. I think I spent about for the two double shoulders, I think I spent right at like 130, something like that for two shoulders. But these are some pretty big shoulders and there's some nice highs. Now getting to the part there where I like going down and putting my hands on my own highs. Because a lot of times, and this is not the Econo line. This is the Craftsman line. But I still like to come in and look. Um, and this is in an, also in another video too where I go in and explain you never purchase your hides from the grain side. I mean, you want to glance over it to check, you know, but the grain side is really irrelevant, especially if you're going to be uh, carving and stamping and things like that. It's really irrelevant because you can work around a lot of those imperfections in those, le in those hides. But it's the inside, the flesh side. This is what you want to lay your eyes on. The tighter the, the flesh, the tighter the, the, the fibers on the flesh side, the better that hide will take tooling and carving because the fibers are so tight and when you get the tooling and carving, they won't pull apart or have those weak spots. Now I know some of you, especially some of you beginners out there who might not have known that, and you get to that soft or that weak spot into that particular piece and you punch it, you, you hit it with your stamp and it makes the impression go way too deep and that's because the fibers are starting to separate. Maybe that one particular spot on that hide was where they really tugged that pulling the, the meat from the flesh side and it made the fibers weak on that, in that area. Or you carve in a particular piece and you, you run in your swivel knife down there and it absolutely cuts all the way through that particular hide. It will happen. It will happen, especially if you just calling up and saying, hey, y'all just send me. Because you got to think, this place is busy all day long. So what they're doing, they got pallets of this stuff or, or tables full of this stuff. So they just go and just pull the first one off the top, roll it up, and then stick it in a box and boom. It meets all of the specs and criteria for the advertisement, but very rarely. Now, and sometimes you get some that slip through the cracks. They might have some that slip through it, depending on if it was a Friday or a Monday. I don't know when they got this shipment in. But a lot of times, some slip through the cracks, and then they just go to pulling that off the top, rolling it up. But it goes back to say, when you build a rapport and a relationship, with that GM or with that management staff or whoever the, the staff is at your leather supplier, you want to build that relationship and rapport with them because they know you're gonna be spending a lot of money with them. And they wanna keep you happy because if they keep you happy, then you will have happy customers. Happy customers will still pay happy money and then the, cir the circle of life will just keep going in a circle. Hey, I'm not going to keep this one as long as I did the first one because I kind of spoiled and ruined all of the elements of surprise. But check into that family. And like I said, I'm going to shoot that video screenshot uh, and a clip inside this, this video so you can see that this, what they're selling these for. And then this guy, he had a whole inside part of that wallet with cardboard. 
I'm the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty Dirty. I got to get back to work. And then, uh, hey, you guys keep crafting, man. And if you have any questions, don't, forget, don't hesitate to drop your questions in the comment box. Like and subscribe this video if you like this information that I'm dropping, these jewels that I'm dropping you. Uh, the new podcast is up right now where I'm having guests that are either social media marketers or social media influencers and they are dropping jewels themselves on how you can take your business to the next level by selling and moving your products through social media. Nobody's, well, I'm not saying nobody because there are some crafters that are still under the old business paradigm of thinking that you have to have a website. Save that money on your website. You heard it right here from the cowboy. Save that $40 a month for a website. Save that money that you're spending some kind of website designer to design your website. Save all of that money and put your focus and your money into your products and your craft and put that into building your social media platform because I'll be going more into detail about this over the, uh, uh, over the next few months. Uh, I'm, I'm on, on all of the major uh, podcasts, uh, streams right now. I'm on iTunes. I'm on iHeart. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple Pod. I'm on Google Pod. So all you have to do is type in plugged in with Robert D. Muhammad and it will pull up the uh, the podcast. Uh, right now, currently, we're running every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, 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 Central Time. But the way that this thing has taken off, because a lot of people are showing interest in learning how to put their business out there, especially crafting in the crafting world, to where you can get the money for the products that you're putting out there. And you can get that money without no hesitation, questioning, and mind wrestling, and tongue wrestling with people about your price. We will show you, i show you all of that, and the guests will explain all of that in there. So, hey, I got to get out of here, guys, and get back to work. I'll see you guys on the other side. Keep crafting, and don't hesitate. Again, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button on there. And if you guys love this information that I'm getting to you, let me know, man, because I love sharing what I know. Hey, I got to get out of here, y'all. Y'all have a good one.